What is the bra test for real estate investors? Well, get your mind out of the gutter, number one. Number two, it's gonna save you a lot of money. That's today's episode, let's dive into it. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris, longtime real estate investor, and when I turned 40, I was able to achieve financial freedom, uh, able to quit my day job because of buy and hold real estate. The whole story is here on a channel if you feel like diving into it, but we try to teach you how to do the exact same thing. So all the tools are right here on this channel. There's, we don't hide anything and hold anything back. You can go through every one of our different videos and shows and actually take action to start creating financial freedom for you and your family. It's all here. It's just a matter of how active you want to be. Are you a dog with a bone and want to take action? Or are you okay with driving two hours to and from work every day and not spending more time with your family? Again, the choice is totally up to you how you want to change your life or not. We give you the tools to do it. Again, we use buy and hold real estate. So we hold real estate every month. For, well, we hold it for the rest of our lives, but every month it produces monthly cash flow. Our tenants are paying us every month. Now, sometimes you might even have a mortgage on that property. That's great. You might have leverage on that property from a bank. Guess what? The tenant is paying the mortgage. And the, the difference, you get to pocket that difference every month. That's the power of rental real estate. But the cash flow is one piece of it. The tax benefits are what I'm really in love with. So the cash flow is one piece, great. But the tax shelter, the tax benefits of rental real estate are second to none, especially if you know how to purchase the property correctly. So on today's show, I want to talk a little bit about the repairs in a rental property. Now, I have a whole series of videos on repairs and things here on the channel, but I want you to think about why repairs are so important to creating that tax shelter. You know, a lot of people get scared and they're worried about repairs. I don't give a rat's behind about repairs. We had to fix a roof on a property in our New Jersey property, one of our rentals, we have 10 there. We needed to put a new roof on it. We could either put a repair or just slap a new roof on it. I said, $3,000, let's put a new roof on it. Let's do it. You know why? Because I love repairs. I want that, I want that deduction. I want to be able to depreciate that roof. I want that tax benefit of making a repair. So when you have people that are freaking out about repairs, what if I have to put a new furnace in 15 years from now? Ooh, who gives a crap? Give me a furnace to put in. I'll put a you know $1,300 furnace in that property. I'll put an $800 water heater in that property. Give me repairs that improve the property any day of the week, and guess what? Uncle Sam rewards you for it. And that's how you create an even broader tax shelter for your overall business. Remember, our businesses are purchasing these properties, and when you have repairs, that is a deduction. So today, I want to talk about the bra test. It's a simple little mnemonic that will help you remember whether or not you can deduct these repairs, maintenance items, in uh, over the long haul, meaning you can, you can take these deductions many, many years in the future. And you can break down the put cost of putting on that new roof for many, many years into the future by depreciating those improvements to the property. And we've gone deep into what cost segregation is all about. We're not going to do that in this episode, but please check out our other tools and tips on how to understand cost segregation. Cost segregation just means that you can depreciate items in the house separately than the house. So the roof can be deducted separately, uh, furnace other items can be deducted separately than just the house, the structure itself. That was a new change in the tax law a few years ago. Okay, the bra test. You ready? Drum roll please for the bra test. What is the bra test? Well, it's a simple mnemonic that means better, restore, or adapt. Better, restore, or adapt. Now, what does that mean? That means that if I'm making a repair on the property, is it making the property better, meaning improving it, from where it was, is it restoring it, or is it adapting it? So better is kind of an obvious word, right? It just simply means that I'm improving this property beyond where it was before. Restoring it to a working condition, let's say you bought a historic home. I mean, I buy a lot of the houses I buy are 70, 80, 100 years old, right? So when I'm buying that puppy and I'm doing the fixes on it, I'm restoring it to a working condition. That's restoring that house. Or maybe you bought a historic home and there's a whole section of the house that 
you know, has been dilapidated. Can you restore that rental property to a working condition? So better, restore. And then the third one is more unique. It's adapt. Adapt. Now imagine taking a property that's a, let's just, because I had a property like this not too long ago, and it was like a six bedroom. It was a really weird property. And decided to basically turn it into like a long-term care facility is kind of what we did with it. It's still in the process and it's going to be, it's a, it's a wacky one, right? It's, it's certainly outside the norm, but it was kind of, you know, it's kind of a fun project to look at. And it had like 10 acres of land around it. It was, again, a bizarre property and not in my normal wheelhouse. Now it was six bedrooms and I was like, oh, I could turn it into a six bedroom house, eh, but it really wasn't the neighborhood for that. What if we turned it into like a long-term care facility and you have to go through regulations with the state and all that. So there are a whole bunch of hoops and hurdles, but now I'm adding an additional kitchen. I'm adding a community area and things like that. So, you know, you take those additional steps. I'm adapting the A, I'm adapting that property to a new use case. So again, better restore or adapt. When you're looking at the repairs that you're doing on a property, the IRS is very specific about it. I'm going to read to you from the IRS code. I hope you don't go to sleep. Okay, you ready? Pay attention to this. This is the IRS code, publication 535. And the IRS clarifies this distinction between maintenance and repairs. Maintenance and repairs, this is very important. Maintenance, you have to deduct in the tax year that you do those repairs. What is that? Fix in a toilet, okay? You're not making the house any better than it was. You're not restoring the house really any more than you are. I like to think of it as like changing the oil in a car, okay? You're just changing the oil. The car's gonna continue running. You're just changing the oil. That's maintenance. That's something you, can, you must deduct in this tax year. If you don't deduct it, guess what? Bye-bye, bye-bye. You don't get to deduct, uh, to deduct it in the next year. You've gotta deduct it in the year in which you're filing your taxes, in the year that you did that maintenance, okay? Very important. Now, a repair is, again, falls into the bra test. So are you making the place better? Are you restoring it? Or are you adapting it? Now, I'm going to read from the tax code. It's very specific. Follow along. Try not to fall asleep. Here it is. Repairs. The cost of repairing or improving property used in your trade or business is either a deductible or a capital expense. See the difference? Routine maintenance that keeps your property in a normal, efficient operating condition, but that does not materially increase the value or substantially prolong the useful life of the property is deductible in the year that it is incurred, right? So think about a roof for a second. If I'm going to put a new roof on my rental property, is that a, a maintenance or repair? Meaning, if I put a new roof on it, is it just kind of, you know, continuing the life of that property the way that it was without any material de benefit? Or am I now putting like an extra 30 years of life on that property? Guess what? I'm putting like 30 years of life on that property by putting on that new roof, okay? I'm materially increasing the lifelong, uh, the, the life efficiency of that property. And that is a capital expense that I can depreciate. I can depreciate it over many years. That's the beauty of repairs, okay? Yes, you want to do maintenance. You hire a maintenance team through your property management company. They go out and they have to do little items to fix and keep the house running on, on time. They have to put in air filters and things like that into your property. That's just general maintenance. That is deductible in the same tax year that you do it. Okay, the bra test. Remember it. I think it's a good mnemonic for you to think about when you're looking at your taxes for repairs. That's why I love repairs. I really do. Anytime I have to fix something, I say, yep, pay it. You know why? Because then that, that comes right off my bottom line. And that's less money that I have to pay in taxes. I create that tax shelter that, uh, that keeps my family growing and burning and churning uh, and creating true wealth. So I hope you start to think differently about repairs. I really hope you think differently about repairs. In fact, I want to leave you with a little quote. I was talking to my tax accountant about this very question. And from a tax perspective, he says, Tom Wheelwright says, repairs are great. Repairs are great. Normally, fully deductible when you pay for them. And there are very detailed regulations explaining repairs and what is and what is not a repair. But they are fantastic 
and the new law has many improvements that can be written off immediately as well as these repairs. So again, thinking about repairs in a different way, don't let them scare you. Just remember that repairs are a good part of the process and something that you should embrace. Embrace those repairs when you need to do them, okay? That's my little nugget today on real estate investing. We have so many great resources here. I will. I really sincerely hope that you subscribe to the channel, share this with a loved one that you think needs to take action to become a real estate investor. Because I truly believe that real estate done and purchased properly, like the way that we purchase it and do it at Morris Invest, can create enormous wealth in your life. It can create enormous space and time with your family. And that's after all, what we're going for. Okay. Thanks so much. We'll see you back here next time. In the meantime, go out there, take action, become a real estate investor. It's the number one way to build wealth. We'll see you next time, everyone.